Hey, this video is an interview of some recreational therapists. Um, there are lots of interesting folks that I know who are out there helping stroke survivors. And so I wanted to talk with some folks who are recreational therapists and find out a little bit more about what they do so I could share that with you and you could investigate um, maybe somewhere uh, close to you to be able to find somebody to help you with some therapeutic recreation. So um, at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a little bit more of a tour of the internet where you can search and find some things. All right, now the recording is in progress. So real quick, I'm just gonna um, introduce you know myself. So I'm Shannon and I'm here um, with some recreation therapists who live here in the Greenville, South Carolina area. Um, but they do some awesome, awesome stuff. And I wanted to learn more about what it is exactly that they do, what their training is, what they're doing here in Greenville and sort of what is possible for folks to access a recreational therapist if they're outside the Greenville area. So I'm gonna let these ladies introduce themselves and talk a little bit specifically about their background and what they do. Yeah, I'm Connor Magar. Um, I'm a recreational therapist here at Prisma Health Rudder CPs for almost four years now. Um, I do, my population is mainly serving outpatient um, TBI and spinal cord injury, uh, as well as implementing the VA Adaptive Sports Grant. And so along with that, our other adaptive sports program is um, the UCAN Adaptive Sports for people in the community with physical disabilities, so. I'm and then Danielle, Danielle, how about you? I'm Danielle Fitzmorris. I'm the supervisor of recreational therapy here at Rogers CP3 Rehabilitation Hospital. Um, I've been a recreational therapist for almost 20 years now and love what I do. I love rehab um, and adaptive sports. So as, as you know, Shannon, we have grown our adaptive sports program um, with Rogers Seat Peace. So a, a lot of people might say, what is recreational therapy? But recreational therapy isn't just playing games all day and having fun. I mean, yes, we do have a good time. <laughs> but the point um, is to help people live life to the fullest with other things that are more exciting in life, more of a wholeness, um, a, a wellness process. So it's not the same exercise every single day. Um, it's something different and getting out of the house. Um, it can be in the house too. It just depends on what people's um, desires are, but something um, that is what they wanna do and we can figure out how to adapt it if needed um, and try it several different ways. We have other equipment that can help get people out of the house, for example, cycling um, is something that your population might enjoy, but not be able to ride a two wheel bike. So we have lots of different types of bikes that can help facilitate that, um, whether it's for um, balance or paralysis or whatever the reason might be um, to get them out and about with their family and friends, um, not to feel isolated that they can't participate in our, our things with other people. But the goal is not just to participate in the events that we host, um, it's to teach them individually how to do it on their own after. Um, because that's what health and wellness is, is not just you know coming to an event once a month or however it may be, it's to continue to do it on your own um, and teach you how to do that along with your family and friends, whether that's teaching the participant or teaching their family and friends, or sometimes um, people are just nervous to get the patient or participant out because they're not aware of how to do it. So then we teach the family and friends as well too. Um, and here in Greenville, we are, um, I guess, the leader in adaptive sports at Rogers Sea Peace for the Greenville area. But if someone wants to participate, I'm amazed all the time when I see different Facebook posts or a random email that comes across my desk or however it may be, that there are so many other wonderful opportunities going on around the country. Um, and sometimes I, my mouth drops a little bit and I'm like, how in the world did they pull that off? Um, <laughs> so, um, but we are a small department here, so we offer a lot of different things, um, but most of our programs are clinic style, introductory sort of things. So taking okay. it to the next level is what we wanna teach people to do on their own or connect them with people who are doing more of that, just because our program is small as far as staff. Um, so we're limited in that area a little bit, but we do have lots of different opportunities. Um, right now we're offering almost 20 different adaptive sports from wheelchair sports, which means, you know, basketball. We have a youth um, wheelchair basketball team, the only one in South Carolina, it's a junior team right now. Um, and we're trying to make it varsity. And then, but with that type of chair, we play pickleball and tennis, um, basketball and softball. 
So that's a lot of sports just with that one type of chair. Um, we offer cycling and golf and just, and I wanted to say just because we use the a word adaptive doesn't really mean it has to be adaptive, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, it just might mean that we take extra time with someone or teach them how to stand in a different way. They might not use anything that's really a different adaptation. Um, we're just teaching them different techniques than the normal technique. Um, so we do golf, uh, we do sled hockey, we do, we were doing curling for a while, but that's not super popular <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we do archery, we do um, water skiing, we do alpine skiing, that's kind of been on hold for a minute, but we're hoping to bring it back. Um, and then what else do we do? That's not it. I don't know. So many other things. I can't even think of all of them right uh -huh. now. Um, but we're excited to part. We do a lot of partnering with other organizations too. Oh, cool. Um, I just said that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, but we partner with other organizations. For example, um, we had a group that was doing a triathlon and we had the equipment and they needed, um, they kind of <laughs> spearheaded some of the swimming and getting their participants, but we helped them with the cycling part of the equipment and then help people with the running portion if they needed um, an assistant. And so we don't always, aren't always the host. We just partner with a lot of different people in the community to put things on um, to help spread the word about adaptive sports. Okay. And so then, so you all are like, you have a degree, right? In recreational therapy. Mm -hmm. We both oh. went to Clemson, so <laughs> go Tigers. <laughs> okay. Me too. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Um, we have an undergraduate degree in recreate in parks, recreation, tourism management. Um, mm. we emphasis, emphasized in recreational therapy. Um, we are certified. We do take the exam um, and keep up our CEUs just as every other therapist. Okay. Um, with whatever they're doing, PTO to your speech. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and then we've been doing some other trainings as well. So like inclusive fitness and some other adaptive trainings um, as well to kind of add to our knowledge base. Um, I have a master's degree in management, but that has nothing to do with recreational therapy. <laughs> um, so the point of what we do also, as I was saying before, um, is just taking a skill and helping somebody live life differently um, well. So that may mean um, like there's a physical, cognitive, emotional component, um, usually to every single thing that we do. Um, and a lot of times people that have had a stroke or some type of other thing happen with them, they're going through a lot, right? Because now their life has changed. And so we help them, um, you know, kind of sort that out and realize, okay, this is your life now. What do we do? And not just put, you know, some red tape in front of them. We try to figure out how to break through all of those different things and continue on. So part of what we do on the inpatient side is... Um, see where somebody is in their treatment process. We work on some cognition, different things, and that can be, that can lead to fun, a fun motor skill, whether it's painting or drawing or doing whatever, it doesn't have to be sport. Um, okay. Someone's leisure, someone's leisure interest, I guess. So we talk a lot about sports, but it doesn't have to be that at all um, for what somebody may like to do. And then we do a lot of processing within, within that too, you know, um, if, if somebody's not or they, they shut down and think, gosh, you know, this arm doesn't work. How am I ever going to be able to do this again? Or, you know, mm -hmm. show people videos and show them how it goes. We've got one little kid on our basketball team um, that has acute flaccid myelitis and he pushes his chair and he's just as competitive as anybody else with one arm. Um, but so he's figured out how to, you know, push in a straight line and do all of that. So mm -hmm. I guess we have a lot of um, tricks in our bag to teach people um, that sometimes people don't really realize at the beginning. So we pull away the blunders and help them realize that uh, things can be different. We're super creative um, and try to talk to people about their wishes too, what they okay. want. Okay. So you can kind of talk with someone about <clears throat> maybe something that was a leisure activity that they participated in before their stroke um, okay. and they might have some sort of block or difficulty seeing how they might do that again. And that's something that a recreational therapist could help somebody sort of problem solve around, um, see that they can do it, offer different ways um, to be successful at that particular activity then. That's that's kind of in the... And with the stroke population, if somebody was 100%, you know, a workhorse and that's all they did, you know, and maybe didn't mm. have a lot of leisure time, then yes. now they have a lot of time um, until they get 
to a point where they're ready to return to work if they are going to return to work or however it may be. Mm -hmm. And so we try to get them to foster some of those things that they used to like to enjoy that they can't do anymore, like you said. Um, And sometimes it's something brand new. You know, I've always wanted to try this, but I never had the time. Well, we have the time now and we don't want to be a couch potato. So let's let's try it. So. And so then go ahead, Connor. I was just saying it also just like offers a new perspective and approach, um, like you said, pulling the blinders off. Um, because some people don't have the resources or the knowledge or, you know, the camaraderie or people around them um, in the community to teach them like, hey, you can do this. We just have to adapt and um, kind of skew it to a different approach for you to be able to continue doing it, just maybe in a different way. And so then you mentioned, um, so you can, can you tell me a little bit about what you can is? Because you said that's part of the programming that you all provide, sort of a partner, yeah? So it's a Roger C. Peace program. Mm -hmm. Um, It's called You Can. It's Upstate Community Abilities Network. Mm -hmm. Um, It was started a long time ago, (laughs) maybe before 99. So 23, 25 years ago, something like that, Mm -hmm. um, by a group of therapists here that were OTs um, and saw the need for adaptive sport. And then we've kind of branched out. So it's um, a 501c3, just like Roger C. Peace. It's um, a nonprofit organization or group. um, And we raise our own funds to provide the sport programming for the community so when someone comes to an event that we we hold um, there's usually no cost or anything like that so we fundraise to purchase equipment and um, provide if we have to pay an instructor or whatever it may be Mm -hmm. or the space whichever we're using so and then you also mentioned that the VA is um, you're in partnership with VA on some programs yeah, so we, the VA Adaptive Sports Grant, um, how many years have we had it? We're going into our eighth year um, working with the VA on the grant. So that's allowed us to purchase a lot of different equipment um, for veteran use, but then it also um, helps us with our UCAN program too, because we have the equipment. So why should someone, you know, you know, okay, just because you have it, then you can it, use right? it in the, yeah. So <laughs> if the veterans aren't using it, then it's available for use yes, in your yes, other program. Yes, for sure. Um, and we've always um, worked with veterans prior to having the grant, um, because they've been our patients or a community member participating in sport, but we've just been able to target um, a few other things specifically for veterans because of the grant. Okay, and so so in my mind, I feel like yours is, because I don't have a perspective, but I'm like, oh, the Roger C. Peace program is is a big program. I feel like, you know, there are like 20 sports. I know you're out in the community, you're doing a lot of different things, but you mentioned you're actually small. Is that, I mean, do you feel like there are other larger organizations um, across the country who are doing similar things? There are definitely, definitely larger organizations. What I mean by small is we have a small staff Mm-hmm. Uh, and we have our stuff in a bunch of trailers and every closet and nook and cranny in the hospital. <laughs> okay. So, um, there are other programs like National Ability Center um, mm-hmm. out in Utah, and they have an actual facility just for that. Okay. Um, it's not connected to a hospital. And so, or people have their own gym, like we're using a basketball gym at a church. So what I mean by smaller is that we have a lot of tentacles out in the community and partnerships mm-hmm. to work in different places but we don't um, necessarily have our own gym and our own pool and our, you know, we have to use partners in the community, so. Gotcha, gotcha. So um, how many sort of organized recreational therapy programs are there out there? Because again, I kind of felt like, again, I I haven't always lived in Greenville, um, but I've worked in rehabilitation and I feel like the inclusion of recreational therapy and inpatient was pretty unique when I got here. I worked in for-profit settings. Um, And so I was shocked that we still had recreational therapy as part of what we offered um, in inpatient rehabilitation. And then again, I feel like the program's pretty expansive um, in what you have to offer. And I just wonder sort of how prevalent is that out there beyond um, the upstate of South Carolina? It's definitely, so in an inpatient population, I'll say in a rehab hospital, we aren't reimbursable. We aren't um, billable in that aspect. So you have to have a hospital who believes in what you do and what it provides for the patient. Um, I used to work at Shepherd in Atlanta and they were a philanthropy funded uh, recreational therapy department. So the hospital wasn't funding them. They were, I mean, they definitely supported them, but they were philanthropy funded as, as that department. Mm-hmm. Um, but most rehab hospitals, if they're car for credited, then they will have a recreational therapist, maybe one, they might not have a lot, um, but it's a requirement to provide recreational therapy if you're car for credited. 
And, and then so, CARF accreditation, spell that out, because what is that, the, uh, oh, go ahead. C-A-R-F, so um, Certified accredit, I think it, Accredited Rehab Facility. Right, okay, so, and that's, uh, yeah. like, it's a big deal, like every, how, I forget how many, deal. how many years they come in and they look through a program and make sure that you, that the program is meeting criteria for a particular yes. specialty. Every, every three or four years, I believe. Um, we that's just had one, but it was virtual, so it was completely. It was different than the house. <laughs> Maybe a little bit less yeah. stress, I hope. <laughs> well, still stressful. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you're going, if you're at a facility like that, you're definitely going to have recreational therapy. Okay. Um, sometimes people will go to, let's say, like a subacute kind of nursing home rehab for a little while. And most of those do not provide a recreational therapist. Um, there are a couple of facilities here. In Greenville that do, but if it's a larger facility that has um, uh, more of the nursing home component, long-term mm -hmm. care, then most of those recreational therapists might be called like an activity therapist, or they, they might not, not actually be certified, but they're providing that programming within that facility. So a lot of times they are um, a rec therapist, but sometimes they're not. You don't have to be. It just depends on what their requirements are. Um, but I will say within Greenville, there are several we're the only rehab hospital. There is a new rehab hospital, um, but they do not have recreational therapy as part of their treatment plan for patients. Mm -hmm. And we do. So I find that unique. Um, more of a holistic approach is beneficial for patients. Um, and then any other recreational therapist that's within Greenville is most likely working um, for the county or a school system or okay. um nursing home, something like that. Or they might be a rec therapist wearing a different hat. Gotcha. And doing something different. Um, so Sure. So if someone, like how does somebody who say they've gone to um, say like that rehab hospital that doesn't offer um, recreational therapy as part of their inpatient um, program and they become an outpatient. And a lot of times, you know, people might get sent, they might just go to the closest outpatient therapy clinic near them, um, mm -hmm. which probably is not going to have um, a recreational therapist. How can somebody kind of, if they're interested in looking at, you know, expanding their options for leisure um, or maybe resuming some kind of activity that they were interested in, how can they find out if they have somebody in their community like you? So the first would be just to make a phone call, I guess, to the main rehab facility if they didn't come from there. Mm -hmm. But really just to do a simple Google search, yeah. um, you know, recreational therapy near me or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. and, and because Connor's working in outpatient, I don't even honestly know if that pops up in um, Google. If you, It probably doesn't mm -hmm. because it's a not a billable service. It's just something we help provide. Um, and Connor will see people who haven't come through our inpatient program or even outpatient. Um, just mm -hmm. someone in the community who realizes we're a resource. Um, and somehow they find out about us, whether it's through a referral or Facebook page. Yeah. However, um, ah. and they'll call, contact Connor and Connor will connect them with different resources or see them on an individual basis. Yeah. And another thing, too, I don't know if you, we mentioned this already, but you don't have to come um, from Roger C. Peace as a, you know, admitted as an inpatient. You can you can be anybody in the community with a physical disability. Um, and the good thing is having known and work with a bunch of different um, outpatient clinics or facilities or, you know, adaptive organizations. A lot of people know me as the adaptive or the outpatient contact, which is good because usually if people do go um, and ask, you know, what can I do around here? A lot of the you know, secretaries or the therapists, they, they will refer them to me, you know, give them my contact. So that's pretty helpful. Um, and by word of mouth as well. But in other, in other towns, I guess, is what you're saying. Sure. So people can look up, um, sometimes we're called two different things. They can look up recreational therapy or therapeutic recreation. Um, mm -hmm. or if it's a sport that they're into typing in adaptive sports or, um, inclusive sports or what are some other names? Um, mm -hmm. just, adaptive activities. yeah, People just disability. Googling a few things like that or, um, recreational therapy and stroke or whatever is happening, but really probably just a couple phone calls too, if they're not finding anything major, but. So if they Google and they don't find anything and there is any rehabilitation in their area, just calling that hospital um, or facility and starting to ask questions. Hey, do you guys have this in the community? Because a lot of people at that facility should know if there's something or not something. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. being provided, or they might know of something nearby and we'll share that with them. Same with us. We don't do everything um, that someone may want to do. So we've connected with other people in outlying communities because um, not everybody is just Greenville. They might live, you know, I don't know, in Seneca or I don't know, over the border in Georgia or wherever. So we try to connect them with resources in their area when they when they go home as well. So okay. Um, is there, <clears throat> excuse me, any kind of like website database of certified, um, since you all carry a certification of certified recreational therapist, like, do you have an organization, like we have our APTA for physical yeah. therapist or AOTA? Um, we're certified through NCTRC. Mm-hmm. And so you can go to that and look up different things in your area. Yeah. Like you would find, if you type in our name, you know, you can find our certification number or whatever. Um, <laughs> So you can find a lot of different information on that page. I'm not sure if they have contact information for us individually, um, but but Atra will too. That's um, um, the Therapeutic Recreation Association. Okay. And they, they have them in different areas too with contact info. So. Okay. So NCTRC or Atra. And Atra also provides up to date um, contacts and resources as well. Um, okay. And, and if they don't have a specific resource someone may be looking for online, you know, you can always call that number um, and their customer service line as well. I've actually okay. done that for myself. And, okay. and we are um, a Move United chapter member, so that's national. Um, and so anybody can go to the Move United website too and find something in their area. Okay. So if they live in Florida or California or wherever it may be, um, they can look and see if there's any um, it would be for adult sports, but they can look on Move United as well because there are different chapters all over the country. So, okay. And they might be big or small or however, they might provide one program or multiple, but there should be something. Awesome. And then they can call that group and they may know other people. Right. Sure. Advice. Then you can <clears throat> just find a kind of one little string to pull on a lot of times yep. can help people. Um, help people find things. And then it sounds like you also sort of partner with, with folks in the community who are active in like, like running groups, cycling groups, um, people who are already out there playing pickleball. Is that sort of another piece of the, of the, of the process so people can continue beyond what the service you you offer is, right? Definitely. Um, so we can't be experts at everything we try to be, <laughs> but with our limited amount of resources and staff, then that's why we partner um, with people. And so actually the woman who was helping us with golf started um, adaptive pickleball. So we tried that because she got into it personally and was like, hey, maybe we should try this. And so we had chairs and so we started and then their organization is kind of taking off and we partner with them to do clinics for ourselves. But then their goal is to offer it on a more regular basis. You know, someone wants to play twice a week or whatever it may be. So we're helping them with a few different things too, um, with resources so that they can get that off the ground. Cause we can't provide pickleball every day of the week. Um, cause right. we have other things to do. So, so that's, I think great how we've been able to partner with different people in the community. So we just kind of maybe a hub and then help them figure it out too. And then. All right. Was there anything else that you would want somebody to know about um, what recreational therapy has to offer or kind of like the fun stuff that you guys get to do with folks. She's really good at the heartwarming stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I, I won't get too far into that, but I mean, it's just awesome to, no matter how many times you've done in a clinic or no matter how many people you've served, it's every clinic is special to me just because I have one new person in the community who you did, you know, email the week prior or whatever, and you get to see that person find a, a smile or enjoy a sport or get back into a sport that they may have done since their injury. Um, or may just have it done in a long time, or maybe they find this inclusion and camaraderie in a sport that they haven't had or had lost, or it just, it, it's awesome to see that you provide an opportunity or a new perspective to each individual that may be new or, you know, they make friends out of each clinic and so forth. I can go on and on, but I want to shut myself off. But <laughs> the level we do and, and getting to serve any any and every individual um, in our community. So, yeah, it's a real opportunity. It sounds like to make connection beyond obviously the activity <clears throat> um, connection with with you all, and then connection with the folks that show up, whether it's participants or the. I know there's always like a, a great group of 
volunteers that'll come out to be a part of of the activities that you participate in so it's definitely mm -hmm. um a real we community do, that's we created honestly, we couldn't do without our volunteers and sometimes our past participants become our volunteers which yeah. is exciting too and one of the exciting parts for me is um i can think of multiple people and i can see their faces right now of someone who took a chance to try something new and i was like whoa i never would have thought this was our thing you know and maybe we might have had to like you know pull their right arm or something just to get them there the first time um, but then they continued to do it um, and now they're excelling at it or maybe they've got their own bike and now they come on their own or I mean it's just exciting to see people give something a try and then see how they might really enjoy it and, and you might not look at them or I don't know you might be like I never would have thought this person would ever do that in their whole life <laughs> um, but but you know it's where they gave it a shot um, and we helped give them the nudge and that's exciting so another thing I'll add real quick is that um, our community volunteers as well we've seen uh, I think at least for this year especially we've had a growing number of new volunteers who are actually from the therapeutic you know uh, background so mm -hmm. we'll have, we have had so many PTs, speech therapists, um, OTs, um, some doctors even come to our events. So it's like growing in the aspect that it's cool to see people that come from the medical field also and kind of join together because we provide that recreational side. But also, you know, they can also add in like more physical side, like for you, PT, um, and just join in together to help that individual get the better and best overall experience. Yeah, and they're not all from Rudder C Peace. They're from right. other random oh, organizations sure. you can find out about. Which <laughs> so, is really cool. Like, that, yeah. that, that's and so awesome. They have a passion for helping people. Um, and we would not do this if we didn't love it. There's a lot of sweat equity that goes into it as well. <laughs> so, um, so we wouldn't do it if we didn't love it. And we appreciate that other people see the value and they come and volunteer um, and help us out for it. So, Well, I really do think what um, what you all have to offer is awesome. It's grown. I think that's been real exciting, <clears throat> excuse me, in the period of time that that I've been here in the upstate, uh, all of the all of the opportunities that you all continue to offer. Um, it's really exciting. So I'm going to put up, um, I'm going to have some links to some information and your Facebook page and put up some of the pictures of like uh, the ski bash and um, some of the other stuff that that you all um, are doing here, and hopefully that can uh, can get some folks sort of pulling on strings, maybe if they're outside this community or folks who didn't even realize how many things that you all have going on here um, that they might want to take a chance on um, now that they've heard that some people have kind of stepped out of their comfort zone and you guys have seen it be real successful. So I want to share with you a little bit specifically about where Connor and Danielle work. They work for the Prisma Health System in South Carolina. And this is the web page for their adaptive sports and events. Just so you can get an idea of maybe some things that might be available near you. Um, they offer alpine ski because we are in um, proximity to the mountains uh, when we have good weather and it can snow. So there's some assisted skiing. Um, I'm going to put this link in the notes for this video so you could check this out if you wanted to. Um, here is cycling. And um, so in this particular video, I know there's one person who is cycling who is a stroke survivor. Um, we do have nice rails to trails bike systems in, um, in the area of prison health, so that does make it nice. But this would be a person who's here assisting this person riding the bike. Uh, there's an adaptive golf video. They also offer pickleball and sled hockey. They don't have videos up for that, but they also have videos up for what they call their ski bash, which is their water skiing event. Um, and that's kind of neat to look at to see how much support the water skiers get in the water. There are folks in the boat watching um, the person being towed behind. There is a, um, like a ski do that rides along with the person and all kinds of folks to help people get set up and, um, and going when they get in the water. So that's a little bit specifically about um, what Connor and Danielle are involved in uh, for some of the, the outdoor activities and indoor activities that they support. There's also um, another organization called Move United, and I wanted to show you this, that you can get on their website and look for, um, for what's going on in your area. So, for example, if I search Florida, 
you can see what is there, and there may be something near you, um, or an organization that you want to reach out to to see if they might have something that you would be interested in um, participating in. So I'll have that link in the notes as well. And then I wanted to show you this website called My Recreation Therapist. So if you look up at the top here, there is a therapist sign up. There's also a client sign up. And um, if you were looking for a recreational therapist, maybe you're considering it something that you might want to try out or speak to a recreational therapist about, you can sign up for an account and then they just ask that you create a job description. And I feel like that could simply be that you just want to explore how a recreational therapist could help you. I and mean, this website helps um, match you up with folks who might be appropriate for you, then you could inter interview them to work with them. So I thought that was actually kind of cool that there is a clearinghouse. And then just so you know, this particular website is supported by the American Therapeutic Recreation Association. So that's that governing entity that Danielle was talking about. So this is a legit website that you could check out. Now you can really learn too. They do sort of relist all sorts of things that recreational therapists can, can help you with. And I'll include this, um, I'll include this link in the notes as well. So thanks for checking this out and um, trying to learn a little bit what a recreational therapist can do for you.